everyone, we are here in Montana waiting for the train. Okay, Okay, as I was saying, we are here in Modena. Okay, anyway, Modena is Ferrari country. Um, I... What? <laughs> okay, one more time. Um, this is Modena. I'm waiting for the connecting train that's going to take me to Parma and um, the first time I was here in Modena was a long time ago. I can't remember. Definitely more than 10 years ago. So uh, this time I'm not stopping here in Modena. The last time I did stay here for a couple of days uh, to check out yeah, Ferrari. A short bus ride takes us to where our Airbnb was and as you can see from here it is very very highly rated and you can see why this little apartment is really adorable full of retro things it's got a bit of a retro theme here note that even the electrical appliances um, like this fridge and there's a little toaster oven and kettle they're in this baby blue color which is adorable and it's got again like i said very vintage kind of feel and what i also love are these beautiful knobs look at that it's i think from alice in wonderland it's so cute so that's all on the so-called first floor uh, and you have a little loft here which is like so cute as well. Um, the bathroom is here as well as this little nook. Now I thought initially that this would be, um, this would have been where the bedroom was but it it's not okay it's actually downstairs and um, what you see downstairs um, we haven't pulled down the Murphy bed yet so we actually use a Murphy bed downstairs and here is the bathroom as you can see maybe small but not too narrow or squishy I mean you'll be pretty comfortable there and we even have access to some skylight okay let's take a look back at that little loft area you can see it's so cozy. Yep, do not touch the boiler switch. Um, what you have here is a little nook where you can sit to read and I suppose um, listen to music. And I think this little chair actually pulls up to a single bed as well. So I, I figured this would be comfortable enough for three persons. So maybe for a couple downstairs and another person on the upstairs. And this is a uh, turntable in that little bag, but it doesn't work. I tried. <laughs> right, after we dumped our bag at the um, Airbnb, it was time to look for some food for we were like so hungry. I highly recommend this place. The food was delicious and the service was great. Um, it's just around the corner from where the A&B was. I just ordered a simple pasta dish along with uh, some roast beef. Yes, I know roast beef, right? Very English. And, and some grilled vegetables. Just a few steps away from where we had lunch, this is the Monastero di San Giovanni Evangelista. It's also a Catholic church, but it was closed on that day, so we were not able to go in. So we kept walking. And here is the Piazza Duomo of Parma. And what you're looking at is the Cattedrale di Santa Maria Assunta. Building of the cathedral began in 1074 under Bishop Count Guibordo, following the terrible fire that destroyed the previous early Christian basilica. Since then, it has always been a symbol of the lively religious tradition of the city, but also a monumental work of art, which through the centuries has been enriched with priceless treasures. 
Two great marble lions guard the entrance to the cathedral. They were sculpted by Giambono da Bisono in 1281 and are among the symbols of the cathedral. The door is by Lucchino Bianchino, who carved it in 1494. A closer look at the lions reveals that they are not perfectly symmetrical. On the contrary, one is red and the other is white. It seems that this difference may be interpreted as the dual human and divine nature of Christ. The two lions represent the Lord and embody his strength, his ability to support his own church and victory over death. An imposing cycle of frescoes that accompanies worshippers along the entire central nave. They tell the story of the life of Christ and also depict episodes from the Old Testament. Both the right and left wall are entirely covered by frescoes, which follow a precise thematic organization. The frescoes between the arches and the women's gallery depict scenes of the Old Testament. Those between the women's gallery and the lunettes images from the Gospel while allegorical figures appear in the lunettes. This imposing work bears witness to Latanzio Gambara's apprenticeship with Giulio Campi, but also to the influence of the painter Giulio Romano. The images of this fresco by Gerolamo Mozzola Bedoli, which dominates the entire cathedral from the apse, convey the intensity of the Eucharistic mystery. At the centre of the fresco is Christ, who, still bearing the signs of his sacrifice, ascends to heaven among the jubilation of angels and saints. The scene is dominated by an intense blue light and gathers in a single composition of the symbols of passion, leading the faithful on a spiritual journey that goes from earthly suffering to divine glory. And of course this, the cupola of Correggio, is what everyone comes to see. The Assumption of the Virgin by Correggio is a grandiose work, did I just say grandiose work, of perspective where light, composition and movement blend in a masterpiece of visual illusionism. Somewhere between the Renaissance pictorial language and the audacity of Baroque art, this cupola was soon pronounced to be scandalous by some contemporary critics. What particularly strikes the observer is the assumption of Mary to heaven, a whirling tangle of figures that accompany the Virgin towards the circle of the blessed. At the centre of the cupola is Christ, who descends from the light in a pose whose plasticity was incredibly innovative at the time. There is, of course, so much to see um, in a place that is so filled with history, but I'm only featuring some of those things that are, like stood out to me. I'm sure when you visit, you might see some things that I uh, might have missed and have stood out to you. But I do want to mention that I'm really moved by the way that they continue to honour the fallen.
like the pizza, pasta. Oh, and guess what? Chicken chow mein. I'm not sure about this. And ravioli. And it's Mulan, of course. That's funny. And there's rice. And then chicken and rice. Oh my gosh! Siu Pao! Okay, so we did our shopping today and lots of stuff so that I, I can cook for dinner and lunch and that saves us some money that we can spend on other stuff. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Give us a thumbs up even if you didn't enjoy the video because it doesn't cost you anything. Please do subscribe to my channel and we'll be back really soon with more on Parma. Until then, I hope it inspires you to travel more, near or far, explore your world and remember to be kind and be brave. Ciao!